Oh my days, it is Friday morning, ladies and gentlemen of the Scribe Tribe, and we are ready to be galactically challenged. There's some empire that needs to be defeated, and I'm here to hold your hand whilst we get all these feats done. Let's do this. It is that wonderful time of the week, ladies and gentlemen, where we do get to have some feats for the Hut Cartel. They are the flavor of the rest of the year, I imagine. And uh, I'm here for it. I'm ready for it. We've got the fantastic permission modifier for this particular galactic challenge, which does mean that our Hut Cartel friendly foes and allies and enemies of all sorts will not be able to die unless the leader of your Hut Cartel has decreased their protection below 100% for the first time. We're basically immortal until that happens. Fantastic. Now, we do have the rather annoying test of strength modifier as the global modifier for this galactic challenge, which basically means until we've use 10 special abilities we've got less offense less tenacity and we cannot attack out oh sorry well we can attack out so we cannot assist or gain bonus turn meter um once we've got rid of that by using 10 special abilities we're able to gain tenacity offense and whenever a debuff is resisted you get five percent crit chance and crit damage the bonus of clarity is less important than the fact that we can't get turn meter and we cannot uh, assist our allies and that's only because we do have the feat over here which is to complete the battle after attacking out of turn 20 or more times you can't call people to assist you can't gain bonus turn meter so the only way we can realistically attack out of turn 20 or more times is through counter attacks so first of all we're going to take a look at a video of how we beat this particular hut cartel at the top tier uh, using the hut cartel faction feat let's get into it all right, ladies and gentlemen, so the team that I'm going to be using is the typical Cad Bane lead. We're throwing in Boba Fett for that AoE ability block, and then we are also going to be using the three marquee characters. <coughs> Excuse me. I like to get that ability block on Darth Vader because his Merciless Massacre is one of the few things that can really mess this up for us. Um, so I just go full send on him. Unfortunately, because we can't assist... Um, it does mean that Boosh Layer is not going to be spreading all of those lovely thermal detonators across the enemy team. A little bit disappointing, but not the worst thing in the world. What you can do is use uh, Skiff Lando's second special ability, and that will actually put retribution on characters. That's quite useful. Now, I will maintain that the, the biggest target to get rid of at the start is going to be Darth Vader. His Merciless Massacre will start killing people. He will ensure that he hits everybody on your team. So treat him as kind of a priority. After that, you do have to worry a little bit about the likes of Palpatine just staying alive forever and stacking all the offense on the enemy team. I'm not sure why I went to attack Palpatine here. I think I was just being a little bit crazy. But you see Boosh Layer over there absolutely dropping fat stacks of bombs on the entire enemy team. I'd actually think it's better for you to use someone like Greedo instead of potentially someone like Skiffguard Lando, but Cassantin almost feels like a necessity because he is essentially going to be taunting the entire time. Um, and that is incredibly useful. It stops people going after Cad Bane, stops them trying to take away all his protection. Um, obviously, keep an eye out for that retribution coming out of uh, Royal Guard. If you can manage to get the shock on him through Cassantin's basic, that is perfect. Don't forget, the global modifier is actually going to be um, decreasing the enemy's tenacity, so it's a lot easier to land debuffs right now. So there we go. We've got that shock on him. That's going to stop him taunting. I think I'm just going after Pelps here because he's so close to being killed. Mm, unfortunately, Boba is impos it's impossible for Boba to attack twice here until he's got rid of those 10 stacks. Even though it's not an assist, apparently the bonus attack on his first one counts as an assist. Um, now, you might get very lucky in, in this particular galactic challenge, in this first fave and fave phase and have Cassantin actually get all the attacks out of turn that you need. I think I very nearly got those uh, 20 assists here with Cassantin, but it wasn't quite there. You saw Palps there died, I believe, from, from dots, I want to say. Um, but yeah, when you get to a position like this, you're looking pretty good. Obviously, uh, Vader is still going to be able to cause you some issues if he does happen to go through Merciless Massacre and just get a big yeet off on your Cad Bane. That's not an ideal scenario. Um, but other than that, just keep wailing away, I guess. It looks like to me in my particular run here, I found it a little bit easier in getting um, <laughs> getting rid of the other people. They seem to have all dropped down quite low in health. Vader is able to recover quite a bit of health, obviously not when he's got shock. Uh, which is another reason why I think Cassandin is pivotal to this lineup. <clears throat> but yeah, 
take the people out as and when you can. And I'm just looking to stack the damage here on Skiff Guard Lando. It's not that difficult of a galactic challenge this time, guys. Uh, I would just say module Boba Fett for a lot of speed. Uh, try and get him out of the gate first. Bouche Lair there, gear level 8, still still clapping cheeks. Um, yeah, module, module uh, Boba Fett for a lot of speed. Get your Cad Bane up there for a lot of protection. And the rest, it doesn't particularly matter, guys. I will be honest. You don't need to worry about their health and protection. They're so low gear, they're not going to deal any damage. Maybe you just mod them for a bit of speed. I don't think the turn order is all that important. Um, and when it's down to just Dark Trooper, there's absolutely nothing that he can do. Uh, he just doesn't have the strength to chew through Cad Bane. And obviously, your Cassantin is basically perma-taunting the whole time. And he can't die thanks to the global modif uh, the faction modifier. So, nice, simple, easy Hut Cartel mission there. Can't really complain about that. We're just waiting for our boy Darth, Troop Darth Trooper? Dark Trooper to die. And we can move on to the out of a turn. Uh, or, sorry, yeah, out of a turn attacks. I believe we need to get 20 of those. So, yeah, I think we got a little bit unlucky here. Probably should uh, should just keep on using Skiffguard Lando's first special on Cassantin to give him that uh, retribution, which means he'll obviously always counterattack. You'll probably hit those attacks out of turn. I didn't quite manage to hit it this time. I think I was probably close, but I wasn't even concentrating on getting that done. So you don't need loads and loads of gear. As long as you've got some high gear characters, you'll get it done. All right, next battle. Okay, so the very easiest way for me to get the attacks out of turn is to use Gas 501st. Um, Gas is obviously going to be taunting until he's lost all of his protection, and as long as he's in a full 501st team, he is going to counterattack 100% of the time. It's a quick and easy way of getting this done. There's plenty of damage in this team, there's plenty of survivability in this team. You will almost certainly breeze through this. Um, so, yeah, I guess I, I like to go after the Snow Trooper operative here for a number of reasons. One, he can stun. Two, he can daze uh, your team, and you don't really want daze. I know gas will cleanse off those debuffs when he gets critically hit, but it's still something you don't really want to have to deal with. So I like to go ahead and get the Snow Trooper operative out straight away, and then really the only threat is Darth Vader. Get rid of Darth Vader, and you will be absolutely laughing. This is a very, very easy way of getting it done, guys. You can see the counterattacks and counterattacks. And obviously, you don't have to worry about timing out because gas is going to be lowering their max health, counterattacks. All of these are attacks out of turn. Um, yeah, super, super easy, super enjoyable. Got no problems with that. We can even yeet out Palpatine here. You might want to save it. You might want to save it just to make sure that you get those counterattacks done. But I find this one to be a very easy way of getting it done. All you need to do is basically get hit 20 times. So, yeah. And here we go again. Boop, boop. Even, even our boy fives over there can counterattack on those AoEs. So, uh, yep, yeah, just makes it a lot easier. Easy, easy victory, but it's not the only option for you. If you don't happen to have um, Gas 501st, we do have other options available to us. If you'll just do me a quick favor, guys, hit that like button down in the bottom corner and just give me a quick subscribe. I really want to try and grow this channel and I could use your help. And this is another option that I found to be quite reliable. It's a boss lead. We're going in with um, Mando, Grief, Boba, and Django. Um, you won't be able to gain the actual attacks out of turn, the assists here from these characters, um, simply because of the global modifier. However, because they deal so many debuffs, under a tanky boss lead, you're actually going to be recovering a heck of a lot of health. Don't do what I do. Actually focus on the character that you need in order to hit contract. Don't be silly like I was. Um, so yeah, this one this one is quite dependable, guys. You've just it, as long as you've got a, like a decent relic boss can mod him for good protection and that sort of thing, you should be able to survive. Grief over here can help recover the protection. Also spreads retribution across the entire team, which is amazingly useful, obviously, um, because we want to get those out of a turn attacks. Just keep using the specials in the hope that you'll be able to get through all of that hesitation debuff and get through to the clarity. But you can see there all mass assists there. Another counterattacks there, so it's this is a nice and easy way of getting it done. I know we're not going to get the assist, but it's still nice to get the dodge. So we've actually hit contract now. I like to try and keep that ability block on Vader, stop him going into Merciless Massacre. We don't want him dealing too, too much damage. Uh, just, just enough damage for us to control. So here we go again. Whenever you can, get that retribution up with grief. That's going to give us our mass counterattack um, capabilities. Here we go. More attacks out of turn. Get that taunt up. Lovely. And counterattacks, beautiful. And we've even got ability to dispel the buffs that uh, Royal Guard passes out. 
I just yeet out Darth Vader because I don't want him doing any naughty business. Um, after that, it's just play it cool, one at a time, just kill him. Doesn't really matter if... Um, that was beautiful. Palps here we they're getting, triggering a mass counterattack from our, turn, uh, our team. Now, the Snowtrooper operative, again, he's annoying simply because he can stun our characters and it's because of the lowered tenacity on your team, it's almost guaranteed to land. So maybe get rid of him as a priority as well. Um, stop him from stunning your characters. If they're not stunned, then of course you'll be able to um, uh, you'll be able to actually counterattack when you've got that retribution up. So yeah, yeah, he's probably quite a high priority character, truth be told. Just slowly, slowly, grief keeping us alive, Bosk's lead keeping us alive. You can even lower their max health a little bit. It's it's a slow burn this one, but it's reliable in my experience. Slow burn, but dependable. More AOEs means more big counterattacks for us. Boop, -da boop, -da boop. Very, very easy way of getting that att attacks out of turn feat done without needing to burn through all of the uh, all of the hesitation debuff that we've got. You can see that uh, Grief, Django, and Bosk are all actually getting quite close to chewing through it, and there's still four enemies left, so there, there is a chance that they'll be able to get through to Clarity, but I don't think it really is the deciding factor on whether or not we win this battle or get the feat done. Unfortunately, our boy uh, Pierre over there just hit a mass daze, and our boy Grief is also stunned, which is a little bit frustrating. We lose our... Uh, <coughs> Our Django's uh, Bounty Hunters resolved there. But hopefully we'll be able to get through to uh, Grief and get rid of all these debuffs. Let's see, Grief. Grief is just such a clutch character, guys. Y'all should really, really be uh, gearing up your Grief if you haven't done so already. I think we get rid of Palpatine here. Or is it Royal Guard? Okay, I guess we get rid of Royal Guard to stop them from gaining Retribution. Yep, we're looking good. Unfortunately, that Snowtrooper operative can hide himself, which is a little bit frustrating because it does mean we can't deal with him because um, he's half the time he's just hiding in the background. But yeah, like I said, guys, a slow burn, but definitely one that we can use to uh, quite safely get this feat done if you didn't happen to get it done with the Hut Cartel. I'm confident that you can get it done with just the Hut Cartel allies. Um, constantly using Skiffguard Lando's um, second special to put Retribution on Kassantan. So he's constantly taunting, constantly with Retribution, constantly countering attack, counter-attacking. Beautiful. And there goes uh, there goes the rest of them. I think I, I literally started going after Snowtrooper Operative here just to drag it out that little bit longer to potentially maybe get some more counter-attacks, but they are both stealth. And there we go. Piet dies and takes out the Snowtrooper Operative with him. Uh, easy peasy. 20 attacks out of turn, beautiful. I'll give you one more video, guys, just in case you do not have either Gas 501st or the Bounty Hunters geared up. This one is a little bit different. I've gone with the Jedi Knight Luke lead. We're throwing in Wat Tambor, we're throwing in the Armorer, and we're throwing in um, Hermit Yoda and, and Jedi Knight Revan. So the idea here is that we're relying on Luke's counterattacking, as well as being immune to stun, and stacking up his stats and putting three stacks of Beskar armor on him. It might take a little bit of finagling to get the opening right so you don't lose your armorer before um, uh, you don't lose your armorer before she gets that triple stack, but it should be okay. Um, this is this is a very, very straightforward sort of counter. We managed to get the three stacks there of Beskar armor because our Jedi Knight Revan dropped below his 50% threshold. And we're just going to pass the turn over to Luke here and stun the enemy team so they can't do anything to our armorer before she puts that triple stack of uh, Beskar armor on our Jedi Knight Luke. Honestly, at this point, hit auto. You've got your med pack on Luke, you've got weapons tech on armorer, and doesn't matter what's on Jedi Knight Revan. It will come down to Luke will be the only man standing and he'll just 1v5 the whole team. Yeah. That's, that's how it's going to go. Um, basically, because he's got that triple stack of Beskar armor, he's got a whole host of additional stats. Um, he's got extra health. He's got extra max protection. He can't be crit. He's going to recover protection at the start of his turns. And he's got a 100% counter chance. So he is always going to hit back. Um, it'll take some time to get through, but it will work, I promise you. All right, guys, I'm going to let this play in the background and I'll catch up with you in a couple of minutes.
And that is going to about do it, ladies and gentlemen of the Scribe Tribe. I hope I was of some use to you today in your galactically challenged days. And I hope that the weekend brings you nothing but joy and glory. More importantly, hit that like button down there and consider subscribing to your boy Scribe. Because I'm here to give you content as frequently as I can be bothered. And if that's not incentive, then I don't know what is. Until the next video, guys. Peace out. Just giving a quick shout out to my patrons. I appreciate each and every single one of you. And without your support, I wouldn't be doing this today. Thanks so much.